I had several of you complete the wrong assignment. You worked on the guided practice in your book instead of um, the worksheet that was attached to Thursday's folder. It looks like this right here. Um, and it, it's fine if you did the guided practice, I still gave you your points because you were still working on the correct, um, the correct concept, but I wanted to at least go through one of the figures you see here, because um, this is more likely what you would see on a test. And I, I just wanna make sure you have a, a good grasp on this concept. So um, we're gonna work A. And so if you wanna pull this out, or you just wanna look at this, or you wanna write it on a, a separate sheet of paper as we work this out, um, we're going to find out what the area of figure A is. Now, if you notice, we have two rectangles, and they have a section here that they overlap. So really, we're looking at the area of this large rectangle right here, and then just this portion of the rectangle here. We don't want to find out the area for this entire rectangle, find out the area for this re entire rectangle, add them together, and then that equal your total area for this figure. We don't want to do that because this part right here is shared by both this larger rectangle and the smaller rectangle. So we would be counting that area twice, and we don't want to count it twice. We just want to account for it one time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to find the area of this figure, find the area of this figure, and then subtract the area that's right here that they share. Okay, to do that, let's go ahead and find out what measurements we know. For the larger rectangle here, we have a length of 15 feet and we have a width of 10 feet. And we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. For this one, we will have 15 times 10. And that's going to give you, let's see if I have any options down here where I can write uh, pointer maybe. And I think the pointer won't let me write. Let's do notes. Notes might work a little better here. So I'll pop over these notes. And here we go. Okay, let's get a pen. There we go. Okay, so we have 15 times 10. So let's go ahead and put that over here. I'm sorry, I'm writing with the mouse, so it's not the, <laughs> the clearest here. I apologize for that. And 15 times 10 gives us... Um, 150. Okay, some quick math facts here. Um, 15 times one is 15. And since we're doing it to the um, tens place, we just need to add a zero. So 15 times one is 15. Add your zero for your tens place and you get 150. So the area of the large rectangle right here is 150 square feet. Now let's find out what the area of this smaller rectangle is. Okay, well, we know we have a width of five feet right here, but we don't have the entire length of this rectangle. Um, we just have that this portion right here is seven feet and this portion right here is three feet. But if we bring these two together here, we do have the entire length if we add the two together. So if this section right here is three feet and this section here is seven feet, well, this section right here must also be seven feet. So we're gonna have three plus seven, which gives us 10. So that means the entire length of this smaller rectangle is 10 feet. Now using our formula for the area of a rectangle, we have length times width. So we're gonna have 10 times five, and that, of course, is going to give us 50. All right, so the area of our larger rectangle is 150 square feet, and the area of a, our smaller rectangle is 50 square feet. But remember, we can only account for this shared portion once. Right now, if we add these two together, we're doubling it. We just need it once. So let's go ahead and take one measurement out of what this is so that we can we're make sure that we're making sure we're only accounting for one. All right, to do that, we need to figure out what the area of this smaller portion is right here. Well, again, if this bottom line right here is seven feet, since this is a rectangle, the opposite line, the parallel line to it must also be seven feet. So this also has to be seven feet right here. Okay, and then right here, same rule. We have five feet on the width right here. Since it's a rectangle and they're parallel, this must also be five feet. 
All right, so now we have seven feet times five feet for the area of this smaller rectangle. So we have seven times five, and that gives us 35 feet. Let's see if we can pull up those notes again. I'm not sure if we can. Sorry, this is a newer part that I'm not familiar with on here, so we'll just keep rolling with it. So we had, let's go ahead again, we had 150 square feet for the area of the larger rectangle. We had 50 square feet for the smaller rectangle. When we add those up together, that gives us 200 square feet, okay? And we calculated that the portion that the rectangle share was 35 square feet. So since we don't wanna account for this twice, right now we're counting twice in here. We're counting for it with the larger rectangle and then we're counting it again for the smaller. We only want to count it once. So let's take one measurement of that out of our combined right here. So we have 200, sorry, I'm kind of jumping all over the place right here to find um, a place to write. Uh, we have 200 minus 35 and that is going to give us 165 square feet. So the entire area for this figure right here is 165 square feet. Um, again, I know I'm kind of a broken record here. We took the area of the larger rectangle and we got 150 square feet. We took the area of the smaller rectangle right here and we got 50 square feet. That counted for this shared portion twice. So we needed to we needed to take away, we needed to subtract one area of that shared portion. We found out the area of the shared portion is 35 square feet, subtracted it from the 200 that they had all together, and we get the 165 square feet.